Hi everyone, welcome back. This is the 45th video in our series on building a chess engine from scratch in the Java programming language. In the last video, I showed you guys how you can use JUnit in order to build test cases for your application. And we went over the reasons why it's actually really important to do this from the outset of building your application. We wrote one simple test case and I asked you guys all to import the test cases I have in my GitHub repository into your project and that way every and you should be able to then run uh, the test suite from there and make sure that all of your tests pass. In this video I'm going to start preparing us for concepts in, uh, in artificial intelligence and maybe we'll write uh, some scaffolding code for our basic AI. Um, <clears throat> Maybe later I'll come back and I'll have all my, you know, in a subsequent video you'll see all of my test cases loaded. I haven't done that yet. I didn't go back and import all my test cases. I did ask you guys to do that. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll go back and do that in a subsequent video. Okay, so uh, here we go. Let's jump right into it. Let's bring up the Wikipedia entry for uh, a concept I want to go over with you guys called Minimax. Minimax is an algorithm that we can use uh, that basically is going to help us make a decision, help our AI make a decision about what move to select. Okay, so let me read here from the Wikipedia entry. Minimax, sometimes called Minmax or MM, is a decision rule used in decision theory, game theory, statistics, and philosophy for minimizing the possible loss for a worst case maximum loss scenario. Originally formulated for two player zero sum game theory covering both the cases where players take alternate moves uh, and <clears throat> the, those where the, they make simultaneous moves. It has been extended to more complex games and to general decision making in the presence of uncertainty. So for us that's a lot of information that we should we need to unpack but some, let me see if I can sort of start here uh, so first it's important to note that uh, chess is a zero-sum game right zero-sum basically means that um, a gain for me is a loss for my opponent right so here we can see zero-sum game in game theory and economic theory a zero-sum game is a mathematical representation of a situation in which each participant's gain or loss of utility is exactly balanced by the losses or gains of the utility of the other participants. Right. So I'm going to ask you guys to read through each each one of these terms uh, that you don't understand. Um, but I think that uh, so far we've defined a little bit about what min-max is and what zero-sum games are. And um, so so with min-max. Basically, let's go down here and I'll show you a diagram for this example. I want you to ignore the code for now and I just want to look at a diagram. And I want to see if I can explain this uh, with the diagram alone. Right, so in this diagram here, what I want you to focus on is that there are four levels of moves that are being executed, right? So let's say that the top layer is the white player, it's the white player's turn, and then the next layer is the black player's turn, and it alternates back and forth, right? So before anything has been evaluated, just focus on the nodes, um, what would happen is that white would make a move, and that would, and that would go along this line here, and it would transition us into a state here, then black would make us a move and that would transition us, that black would have uh, one of two possible moves to make and it would transition us to here to this level, right? Then white would move and we transition to this level again and then black would finally move and we would transition down here. So the way that you would think about it is that um, in chess you would say that there have been two full moves that were made or in computer chess you would say that's four plies, right? So white moves, black moves, white moves, black moves, right? That's four plies, or in, in, in sort of chess parlance, we'd say that's two, two full moves, right? So the way that Minimax will um, make its decision is that 
um, what we're saying here, what we what we will we, we first have to acknowledge some truths. The first truth that we would acknowledge is that in a game of chess, um, there are too many moves and boards for us to enumerate all possibilities and make the first move towards the win winning all games, right? You can do that in simpler games like tic-tac-toe, okay? Um, I could create a game that would analyze all of the, po the possible game states for tic-tac-toe, uh, and I think from what I remember it's somewhere right under a million possible states. I, I forget the exact number, but I could write a computer program that would analyze the entire state and it would go ahead and ensure that I would never lose. It could guarantee cat's game for, for tic-tac-toe. I think for more complex games that were more recently solved, you can look at um, something like Connect Four, where we can guarantee now um, that if white, or excuse me, if wh whoever moves first in a game of tic-tac-toe, you can guarantee that that person's going to win as long as they make the, you know, as long as they follow that, the procedure that's been exhaustively analyzed for tic-tac-toe, or excuse me, for Connect Four. So for chess, we say that that's impossible. Uh, the number of um, chess games, I think, or the chess boards, valid chess boards, exceeds the number of atoms in the known universe. Something to that effect, you can look the number up. Um, so you cannot do that. And so what you do is you cut off the game tree. You say, instead of going all the way, you know, instead of going to this, this black hole of never-ending moves, I'm going to stop after a fixed number, Right, and in, in this example, we stop after four plies, and I'm going to evaluate those boards, and I'm going to evaluate those boards using a heuristic, right, just a function that analyzes those boards and says who's winning, white or black. The convention that we use is we say that if white's winning, they score a positive number, and if black's winning, they score a negative number, and neutral, the neutral position is a score of zero, okay? So, you know, in this example, uh, at after four plies, we see that, um, you know, white could be winning here by 10 points or positive infinity along this branch. What does that mean? Positive infinity basically means that the game is over, right? So for chess, it would mean checkmate, right? Along this branch, you can see that um, white scores five points. Along this branch, 10 points. And along this branch, there's two options, seven and five. So I think you get the idea here, um, right? So the basic concept is that you go to a fixed depth. And at the bottom of that tree, you apply a an evaluation function. and We'll talk about what that evaluation function will look like for chess, for, for us in, in the game of chess, but just imagine that it was a magic function that could score the board. And the more positively the board is, board is scored, that means white's winning. The more negatively this board is scored, that means it's black's winning. And then the last step is to propagate up the score such that the player will make the first move that leads to a win, right? So in this example, in this example, we say that white is moving, and we're going to go all the, first. The computer's going to come. It's going to go all the way down here. It's going to evaluate at depth four, ten, and positive infinity, and, and then it's going to come all the way down here, and it's going to score five, and all the way down here, ten, seven, five. This isn't exactly how it happens within the execution context of the computer, but don't worry about that detail. Uh, right now, just focus on the fact that. Imagine that in our imagine that in our world all of these values are calculated, right? And then what we say is you propagate back up. This is the maximizing level and this is the minimizing level. So, so here you have uh, the, the the even numbers are maximizing levels and the odd numbers are minimizing levels. So from here, what's the minimum of ten and positive infinity? It's ten. What's the minimum of five and nothing else? Just five, right? What's the minimum of minus 10? 10, ten, minus 10. What's the minimum of seven and five? Five. What's the minimum of negative infinity? Negative infinity. What's the minimum of minus seven and minus five? Minus seven, right? 
Now at this level, we apply the maximizing rule. What's the maximum of 10 and 5? 10. What's the maximum of minus 10? Minus 10. What's the maximum of minus, or excuse me, what's the maximum of 5 and minus infinity? 5. The maximum of minus 7? Minus 7. Now at this layer, we're going to apply the minimizing rule. So 10 and minus 10? Minus 10. 5 and minus 7? Minus 7. Okay? Then we apply the maximizing rule, minus 10 and minus 7. The max is minus 7. So this tells us the first move that we make at this level right here is we move here. Whatever transition that is, that's the move that we make. That is the gist of the Minimax algorithm. That's going to be what we, this is the foundation for what we're going to build all of our future AIs in this series on. Right? So AI, so Minimax actually, it goes very deep. I would liken it to, um, you know, building an engine in a car. Um, there's lots of aftermarket parts that we can build on top of our engine to make it faster and better and smarter. Um, but this is going to be the foundation for our AI, this algorithm that I just uh, explained here. Okay? So there's a lot of talking. Now let's jump back into the code. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce a new package here at the player level. New package. And we're going to call it AI. And within our AI package, right, um, I want to introduce first a new interface. Okay, I'm going to have a new Java class, which is going to be called Move Strategy. And it's going to be an interface. And this is really going to this is really going to describe how the move engine, what we want the move engine to conform to, what the interface is for our, our move strategies. And we're going to have many different move strategies. The first move strategy that we're going to um, build on is Minimax, just for a sort of the, a pedagogic understanding of what we're doing. So let's say move execute. We're going to have one method on here called execute, and it's going to take a board, board, and a depth. Right? That was what we talked about. So we're going to um, get our imports straightened out there. Right, so now we have this move strategy uh, interface. And we're going to create our first class here. And it's going to be called Minimax. And it's going to implement move strategy. And let's go ahead and implement our method. Okay, so <clears throat> our AI is going to invoke this method called execute on a board for a given depth, and it's then going to use the Minimax algorithm in order to calculate the best move uh, for uh, the game, okay, for using, using that strategy, okay? So, um, right. So in order to do this, in order to do this, the, I mentioned that there needs to be a, um, an evaluation function. And the evaluation function is going to score uh, the board, right? And we might have different evaluation functions. The first evaluation function that we create might just look at who has more pieces. Then we might consider mobility, which is who has more legal moves. Uh, then we might look at pawn structure, right? Then we might look at check and checkmate. Um, um, then we might look at uh, castling, whether that you know the board, the white can castle or black can castle, or if they've lost their ability to castle. So there's many different dimensions that we can look at, right? Um, so, so the first thing I want to do is I want to introduce another. You know, I want to go by the scaffolding. So I, I want to introduce another interface, and this is going to be called Board Evaluator. Okay, and this is going to be an interface as well. Okay. So, and Board Evaluator is going to have a simple method on it that returns an integer called Evaluate. Board, board. And we can pass it the depth if we need to. Let's pass it the depth for now. I don't think we'll need it. To evaluate a board, 
but let's just go ahead and pass it to depth. For now, we can change that uh, later. Really, you know, theoretically, we, should, we only really need to the board itself for evaluation, right? So now we have a board evaluator. Uh, why is this underlined? Oh. Huh. Okay. So now we have a board evaluator, and it returns an integer. And remember, what we said was by convention, the more positive the number is. That means that white's winning. The more negative the number is, that means black's winning, and we're playing a zero-sum game. So what's good for white is bad for black, and vice versa. Okay. So let's go back to Minimax, and I want to say that there's going to be a private final board evaluator. Oops. Board evaluator. Board evaluator. And this is complaining because it's saying it's a public minimax. And this dot evaluator board evaluator is let's just say no for now because we haven't created an evaluator, but let's pretend in our minds that we had an evaluator that took everything into to account here, right? Okay. So uh, what else do we want? What other methods do we want to start to have in here? Let's go ahead and introduce override public string to string so that we know what evaluation method we're using here. So we're going to say, for this one, we're just going to say return minimax, right? And uh, yeah, let's leave it at that for now, OK? So. Right, so here's what we'll do. We will stop the video here, and I'm going to break this into multiple parts. Uh, I'm going to keep each one short, and I, and I promise to do the follow-up to these videos very soon. Um, and what we'll do in the next video is where we, we will begin with the, um, the execute method and how this is going to be implemented. It's actually really cool, I think, uh, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy it. Uh, please do rate and uh, like and subscribe and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.